Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're sitting over here. I actually played a couple of video games today, kind of relaxing. I get into the studio really early and just kind of just relax a little bit, take it down a notch before I get into all these articles. Sometimes these things just juice me up. They get me crazy. Today we're going to be talking about Elon Musk, SpaceX, and a combination between SpaceX and I believe it's KDDI is the company. And I put together some notes earlier and I want to talk to you about it. It was an article over on, I believe it was Teslarati. Um, don't quote me on that. I believe that's where the article was from. I want to talk to you guys about this because I just did a video about Elon Musk and T-Mobile and that joint venture right around August 2022 between the two of them where they penned a deal that SpaceX Starlink would give coverage to T-Mobile, T-Mobile would give coverage to SpaceX. Basically, they were doing backhauling and providing a means to have satellite connectivity with your cell phone, which I thought was really interesting. And I did pose some questions at the time, and we're going to get into that in just a second. But... I printed out that article. I want to go through this with you, number one, and then I want to get your thoughts on it. I want to know what you think about this because I think that it's very odd that they penned a deal between T-Mobile and Elon Musk, yet this company, KDDI, is in Japan, and it looks like they're going full throttle with this, like now. Like 2024, they're going to be offering service, like right away. So why is that? What is going on with that? Why do we not see that same type of motivation, inclination, fast forward with T-Mobile in comparison to this company in Japan. I, I don't understand what is going on, but we'll get into that in just a second. Before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be very helpful for the YouTube algorithm to shine their glorious light on the channel as well as this video. Would appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed as of yet, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just simply want to give a little donation, say thanks for all of my hard work, there's a little donation button down there. You can go and click on that if you'd like. If not, that is perfectly fine. That thank you button will remain there in perpetuity. If you ever want to say thank you, you can. But instead, consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be much better. That would be awesome. If you want more Starlink coverage, I put together a Starlink playlist just for you. So when you're done watching this video, I have about 180 other videos for you to check out. I'll put a link over here. Also, if you're looking for a VPN, and more importantly, a VPN that offers a static IP address as well as port forwarding just for a couple of extra bucks a month, check out Pure VPN. If you go over to jcristina.com forward slash VPN, once again, jcristina.com forward slash VPN, it will take Take you right over to the discount page. You can also use promo code JCristina for an additional 15% off the already crazy low price. I think they're taking 60, 70% off right now or something. Go and check that out. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash VPN. So let's get into this very short article and then I want to get your thoughts on it. I want to give you some of my commentary, what I think is going to happen with this because I think it's very odd very perplexing. Why is it that Elon Musk is going with this Japanese provider in comparison to T-Mobile sooner than T-Mobile? I, I don't get it. Anyways, the article starts out by saying Japanese telecommunication operator KDDI Corporation and Elon Musk, SpaceX, recently announced an agreement that would provide satellite to cellular service in Japan. This is exactly what was being offered between SpaceX, Starlink, and T-Mobile. August 2022. The service will use SpaceX's Starlink satellites and KDDI's National Wireless Network, or Spectrum. As per a press release, SpaceX and KDDI will initially offer 
SMS text services with voice and data poised to be added later. Now I talked to you guys about this when SpaceX was talking to T-Mobile and saying that, oh, we're going to be able to provide access anywhere on the earth and we're going to be able to do it very easily between using the Starlink satellites and the T-Mobile spectrum, yada, yada, yada. And I was thinking to myself, how is this possible? I know Mr. Bevel up here, the satellite dish from SpaceX, Starlink, whenever it rains, there is rain fade. Whenever there is any type of obstruction, like heavy winds, like right now we have a hurricane coming through. Luckily, it's going to pass us. We're getting about 35, 40 miles per hour winds. But when you see the trees start doing this, well, it's obstruction, no obstruction, obstruction, no obstruction. So we know obstructions is a problem. So how exactly are you going to be able to get cellular service on your phone inside of a building through a roof? And I was speculating at the time. I said, you know, this is absolutely not possible. There's no way for this to happen. You need to be outside. Well, that's kind of what they're alluding to in this article. They continue by saying satellite to satellite SMS text function are expected to be rolled out as early as 2024. The service will also be compatible with almost all existing smartphones on KDDI's network. KDDI has noted that the service will help to connect people in remote areas of Japan who are currently out of reach of traditional cellular networks. As stated by the telecom operator, it is already providing 99.9% of the coverage to the population in Japan. So they are pretty much the only provider. However, only a small portion of the Japanese landmass is inhabitable, so it is quite difficult to use traditional technology to provide coast-to-coast -coast coverage. With Starlink in the picture, such issues are addressed. With the addition of voice and data services in the future, full connectivity to all areas of Japan become a possibility. On its official page for the service, KDI highlights that users would be able to achieve connectivity anywhere the sky is visible. Once again, the sky is visible. This is actually telling the truth. It's stating that your phone needs to be outside for it to work, just like I speculated about a year ago, August of 2022, but they never stated any of this. They made it sound like all pie in the sky, literally. Like you'd just be able to use your cell phone sitting in like here inside of a building and it'd be no problem connecting to a satellite. And I'm like, how is that even possible? It's not possible at all. Well, here in this article, they're making it very clear, crystal clear, that that is not a possibility. Now, once again, Mike, I think his name is Sivert, 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 I believe. He is the CEO over at T-Mobile, as well as Elon Musk. I think it was August, 2022. Yeah, August, 2022, when they penned this deal, this joint partnership between Starlink and T-Mobile. So it is like one year to date and nothing has happened over there. We're here with this KDDI people, they're like going full forward. They got this thing moving already. I'm like, what the heck is going on? What is going on with T-Mobile and SpaceX Starlink? I was talking about that in my last video and a lot of you guys had some ideas. Matter of fact, go watch that video. I'll stick it over here. It was very interesting. Anyways, on their site, they quote this. If you can see the sky, you can contact your family and friends with your usual smartphone even at sea. If you can see the sky, you can get information with your usual smartphone, even in an emergency. If you can see the sky, you can connect anywhere. So basically, the sky is it. You need to be outside with your phone to be able to make these calls. At the beginning, they're gonna roll out SMS, obviously, which is text messaging. That's the easy part. Those are small bits of data. Then after that, they'll roll out data like phone service as well as maybe video. So obviously, that takes a lot more power to do so. And they'll probably wait for SpaceX Starlink's version two maxis, the big satellites to be put into orbit once the Starship gets on board and doesn't blow up anymore and can take those larger satellites into orbit. The version two minis do have the necessary antennas built onto them, but I don't think they're gonna roll them out. I think they're gonna use those for beta testing for right now. And then once those version twos come online, that's when I think all of this is going to happen. I think that's kind of what is pushing this back into 2024, in my personal opinion. 
I don't work for SpaceX, so I'm guessing at this point. The article finalizes by saying SpaceX and KDI have extended an invitation to other mobile network operators around the world to join the ecosystem of satellite-enabled connectivity. This is important. Such solutions, after all, could go a long way towards establishing a system that could effectively connect the world. SpaceX Starlink's constellation continues to grow as well, so its network and services are only bound to get better with time. 110% the case. So, while I think that this is very interesting, someone named Michael, you know who you are, sent me a comment on one of the last videos. I believe it was a video that we talked about the SpaceX and T-Mobile combination partnership and why it's not happening. I believe it was on that one. And they asked this, they said, thanks, excellent, Jay Christina. The future of Tesla vehicles and connectivity is Starlink plus a land-based mobile provider like T-Mobile. This would help ensure that vehicles are always connected at least 95% of the time. Plus, in my opinion, for increased safety, it is important that individual Teslas communicate independently and directly with each other, perhaps using an ultra-wide band or UWB to avoid collisions. A video about your thoughts would be great. So, I was thinking about this, right? And I think he has a really important point here. And this is something that I want to talk to you guys about. And I want to get your thoughts on it. You know, we have always this IoT that everyone talks about, the Internet of Things, and having all of these devices interconnected and sending data all over the place. Your watch, your phone, your everything, right? doesn't matter what it is. Your thermostat is sending out data all the time right? So the Internet of Things. It's basically a mesh, a mini mesh network that is built between all of these things that can connect to each other. Now, I was thinking about this and I said, you know, SpaceX Starlink is basically doing that, right? Taking the 4,500 satellites up there and creating a mesh network. So they're all going to work together and using lasers, they're going to connect to each other forming a mesh network. So they all know what the other ones are doing. Doesn't matter where they are on the planet, they can communicate with one another, basically forming that mesh. Well, how about if we had a mesh down here? Now, what he's talking about, Michael is talking about, is a mesh network with Tesla cars, so that all the Tesla cars talk to one another. And that would make sense, all right? So that, let's say a Tesla was going to move from lane A to lane B, it says, hey, all Teslas around me, just telling you, I'm gonna move from lane A to lane B, telling all of the cars what that car is going to do. I think that is great, once again, for collision avoidance. Well, how about also if all of the Teslas now create a mesh network, but a network using SpaceX Starlink? I can see in the future all Tesla cars have a roof that do have a Tesla antenna built into them. Think about it. There's no reason not to, right? So if that is the case, your Tesla would have 100% connectivity. Maybe you have to pay an extra $150 per month for that service. Once again, it would be like a mobility service. You can drive anywhere with your Tesla and have full connectivity. That's awesome. But now how about if each Tesla, like what he's talking about, forms a mesh network. So not only it's for collision avoidance, but maybe it's also for the internet. So if you have a Tesla that's sitting underground in a carport and you have a Tesla that's on the street, they can talk to one another through like an ultra wide band type of network, through Bluetooth, through Wi-Fi, through whatever means that they can do so, but communicate once again from Tesla to Tesla. One Tesla cannot see the sky. Once again, the sky is that important part here, as they stated in the article. You have to be able to see the sky. If not, you're not going to be able to get connection to a satellite. So the Tesla on the street can see the satellite, whereas the Tesla underground can't, but they can communicate to one another. So the Tesla underground might have slower speeds, but he can use the speed or use the connection through that Tesla. Very interesting possibility. Well, how about if we take this one further? How about if that mesh network now, once again, is through all of the satellites, the mesh network is on the ground through all Teslas. How about if the mesh network is through all phones? 
That would be interesting, right? So now, if I'm sitting here in the building, all right, I cannot see a satellite, so I cannot use my service, my satellite SpaceX Starlink service, but I have someone outside that's hanging out maybe at the pool or maybe it's doing something outside where I can connect with them. Let's take this one further. Maybe you're in New York City, all right? And you're right around Central Park. Well, Central Park is like a hole in this, let's call it a concrete jungle. Well, this hole can see the sky, meaning that it can see the satellites as they go overhead. Well, all of the people that are in Central Park have phones and they have connectivity. Now, if you were in a coffee shop, let's say right off one of the streets of Central Park, you could still get internet access if you do not have cell service in case of an emergency using one of the phones that are out there in Central Park. You follow me here? Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of issues, you know, battery life. How much can people use? Will it slow down your internet connection? There'll be a lot of things that they'll have to figure out as well as privacy issues, right? Everything would have to be ciphered. Everything would have to have some type of encryption because the data that's going from the guy that's sitting in the coffee shop into your phone and then up to SpaceX Starlink, that needs to be encrypted. So that would be a major issue. But just think of that, creating an actual mesh network with every phone on the ground. And if you were to be able to collaborate with T-Mobile and AT&T and Verizon and all of them, now all of a sudden, as you're walking around, everyone is sharing this service. All right. And it costs them nothing to do so because it behooves SpaceX Starlink to create this network because it just makes them even bigger. I know there's been a lot of people that have been complaining about Elon Musk having all of this power. Well, he's building it. There was a vacuum. I talked about this in the past. I'm not going to get into it. You can watch a previous video. There was a vacuum and Elon Musk filled the vacuum. If the government didn't create the vacuum, Elon Musk wouldn't have filled it. So it is what it is, right? You cannot unopen Pandora's box. The box is open. So that's the end of it. They just have to deal with them at this time. So I think that it's great that KDDI in Japan is going to be working with SpaceX Starlink, probably going to be the first to actually get this to work because as I said, we have not seen anything, literally nothing from the T-Mobile and SpaceX Starlink joint venture since August of 2022. It's been radio silence ever since then. So I don't know what's going on, but what we do know is we know that these KDDI people in Japan are working at it and they are now in cahoots, let's say, or partnership with SpaceX Starlink as of today. And they said they will be providing service, let's call it in about four or five months in 2024. Maybe the beginning, maybe mid, we don't know as of yet, but definitely in 2024, they're going to start out with SMS and then they're going to move into voice and data. This is fantastic. What do you think about the mesh network? What do you think about a Tesla mesh network? What do you think about a phone mesh network using not only the communications of the towers, but also using communication with SpaceX Starlink satellites? I think this could be big, guys. I think that this could be big. I think it could be the future when everyone is somehow intertwined. Once again, the biggest factor that will be involved here will be security and being able to lock things down and having those ciphers, having that type of encryption between the beginning and the end, right? An end to end encryption, because if not, and you have people coming in there and sniffing packets and sniffing data, you can end up with a major, major problem. So we'll see what happens. I want to know your thoughts about this. What do you think? Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you in a vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.